mainly you want to look for the orange on the belly and under the tail, sort of buffy wash they call it, um, and the dark line through the eye. Um, those two things distinguish it from very similar yellow-billed cuckoo, which is uh, much more common and widespread and obviously not what we're after. We want that guy. I don't really know exactly the reason for my fascination with birds. It started when I was a kid though. I used to go out looking with my dad for birds and uh, just caught on somehow. Somehow the excitement of never knowing what you're going to see when you go out, I guess. And just, just a good reason, you know, sort of incentive to get out and explore. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's always been fun for me. So. Well, I'm looking for the elusive mangrove cuckoo. And I read somewhere online that they've been at this park. But this is really just an extra stop on the way down. We got better spots. I guess some people think that it's uh, a little strange to look at birds. Um, and I can see, I can see why, I mean, it's, it's strange to see somebody walking around with binoculars, like, in public places, looking into trees and stuff, because most people never notice the birds that are there anyway, they don't care, it's just part of the background. Um, so it seems weird to pay so much attention to them, but... You know, everybody's got their thing that they're interested in, so I don't see it as being that different, ultimately. Well, I'm in Punta Gorda and I'm trying to find this park. Uh, I can't even remember what it's called, and I forgot to look up directions, so it's crapshoot at this point. So why are they only found in Florida? Well, they're, they're actually found um, other places in the Caribbean, but as far as North America goes, they're only found in South Florida. For some reason, the cuckoos don't seem to venture that far north. Uh, Can I, I know why? Someone probably knows why. <laughs> that up there. That's a Eurasian collared bill. It's pretty big. Oh, nice.
I think we saw the yellow crowned night heron. See, the young ones look very similar the, between yellow crowned and black crowned. But for this time of year, I guess uh, it would be a first summer bird, and it definitely looks more like this one. Binoculars are safely strapped in. Um, so I've just made the stop in Punta Gorda at Ponce de Leon Park. No mangrove cuckoo, not very surprisingly. Um, it's pretty, you know, there's a lot of people around. It's not, it doesn't seem wild enough to have mangrove cuckoo. Um, we saw a yellow crown night heron, which was cool, and um, some crabs. I guess I'll uh, just head down the road for Fort Myers. <sighs> Whenever I'm driving around, I, uh, I do keep my eyes peeled. Some doves over there, for instance. I look, you know, power lines, there's usually birds on power lines or soaring in the sky. Sometimes you see some hawks up there. Um, you know, theoretically it's a little dangerous. Uh, sometimes I almost run off the road or something. But, um, you know, usually I can identify the bird pretty quickly and can get my eyes back on the road, so it's not too bad. This is a kettle of vultures over here. It's uh, a whole bunch of them circling together. That, it's called a kettle. I'm not sure why, something to do with maybe the uh, heat. Uh, I think I've heard that it has to do with how uh, like in a kettle of boiling water, the, uh, the hot water bubbles up or something. That's kind of, they're riding rising hot air currents. I've just crossed the bridge onto Sanibel Island and I know there are mangrove cuckoos on this island so theoretically you could see one at any time although they don't really like to be around you know developed areas so they're probably not going to be out here on the main road still we got to be wary as I eat my jerky so, I just entered the National Wildlife Refuge, and the last time I was here was 1993, I think. It was a big treat. So my parents took me here to do some birding. 
I was about 13. Hold on. People are looking at something. We had some ridiculous tour from this. <coughs> How much did you pay to get here? I had to pay $6 to cross the bridge <laughs> from the mainland. And now I have to pay $5 to enter the wildlife drive. I wonder what those people were looking at. reddish egret. Let's see if he uh, he runs around. They're kind of known for um, running around while they hunt. There he goes. That's a that's a tactic that only that species uses, reddish egret. It's a good one. I'm looking for the cuckoo mainly up in the trees. Uh, they feed, I think, mostly on caterpillars and other small insects, maybe lizards, um, but mostly they'd be pretty quietly hanging out in the trees. <clears throat> if I don't find the bird at all on this trip, uh, you know, I'll be uh, I'll be disappointed. Of course, I mean that's the main main point of this trip is it's a quest for that one bird so um, you know I of course I'll, I'll try again at some point if I, if I don't find it now but this is only the first day so it's not you know I, I want to stay optimistic uh, at this point I'm gonna stop and take a look at what's over there there's a bunch of birds over there So those are mostly dunlins, uh, some willets, and some dowichers mixed in, but I think that's about it for the most part. I got some ideas of what the best places are uh, to look uh, from the internet, of course. Um, a lot of people post sightings of uh, rare birds or hard to see birds like mangrove cuckoo. So, um, I know there are a couple trails in here in particular where people have seen them, but it's, it's never a sure thing. Alright, tell me what just happened. I don't want to... Josh, come All on. Alright, uh, so I just left the wildlife drive. It's a little shorter than I thought it was. So we're back out on sort of a main road now. I'm going to go check out the visitor center, get a map or something. Maybe they have some updates of bird sightings and stuff, so see what they say. That must be what this is, right? Five dollars, five two oh nine. But try, try. 
trying to find the damn visitor center. Three thirty. Barely made it up. Oh, here's some stretching. Uh, Stretchy post. <laughs> there it is. Nice. It's seen recently. It doesn't say how recently there, but yeah, it does. At least around. around. that they haven't seen them uh, in a couple weeks but um, they showed me a couple trails where we might find them so I'm just go back on the drive and then find it well I said in the past they've seen them along the indigo trail along the shell moon trail um, but recently it was over here at the start of this cross dike trail so we'll just drive in about halfway down the drive again and take a look around there. So I had a little bit of a drop in my energy level for a little bit there, but you know, we've got some New information uh, on the second pass around the drive. I'm feeling good. So, I'm gonna charge down this trail and see what I can find. Drying on his wings. Well, I heard something a minute ago, but I, I didn't recognize it. Hoped I would hear it again, but it's gone now, I guess. Explain what that weird purple thing is. So this on the right is a little blue heron. Um, looks pretty similar to the reddish egret that we saw earlier. <laughs> if I'm allowed to do that. But uh, it's a little bit darker. Um, sort of shorter. Doesn't have the shaggy head. And uh, it doesn't run around. As you can see, it's fishing right now in a much more dignified manner um, next trail is called the shell mound trail I heard that not too long ago someone saw a mangrove cuckoo there or heard one or something I think uh, I may have timed this visit poorly for a bad time part of the day because it's just hot and not too much going on we've seen some birds but overall it's pretty quiet and Hoping things will be better tomorrow morning, but for now, I'm gonna give this uh, Shell Mound Trail a shot. So today we didn't see much at Sanibo, um, but it was just it was during the heat of the day. We need to uh, go back to the hotel, regroup, go over the the plan for tomorrow, uh, study the call, the bird's call again, and uh, yeah, get ready for a big day tomorrow. Twilight Zone. 
Oh man, you got recording. This is not the way I wanted to start the day. Oh shit. That's what it is, we're in Fort Myers Beach. Cause inside out, it's wiggy to wiggy to wiggy to whack! I am going back to Sanibel Island. Day two, yep. Go, 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 girls, go, that's what I be. Girls, talking, you know, talking, it's the Mac Daddy. I got a float, you got a what? I got a float. I got a float, I got a float. You got a float, so let it go. So, according to the bird list from the uh, state park, mangrove cuckoo is uncommon to rare. I think that probably means it's rare in the winter and uncommon in the spring and summer. But uh, either way, there's not too many of them around. So this is my last stop at uh, Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge. I walk the Shell Mounds Trail again like we did yesterday afternoon. Um, haven't had any sign of a mangrove cuckoo yet. Uh, heard some calls that kind of similar, but I don't really think they were. They're probably herons and uh, saw some great crested flycatchers that looked momentarily like mangrove cuckoos. Um, but yeah, we'll give this trail a shot and uh, see what happens. Uh, if it doesn't pan out here, I'm going to continue on. Looks like uh, I'm going to be leaving Sanibel Island without seeing or hearing a mangrove cuckoo, but uh, the best spots are still to come, so 
You'll hear from me. What do you, what do you think pooped that? I have no idea. No idea what left that huge poop there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, how are you? That's good to know. This is Clarice, your audio top mate, wishing you a bright and beautiful day. Thanks. You're welcome. And what's your name? <laughs> Josh. I love the way you say your name. Let's start our day with a bright affirmation. Is that okay with you? And how? Good. Please repeat after me. I greet this day with gladness and love. I greet this day with gladness and love. Now it's your turn to make up an affirmation. Go fuck yourself. That's a great idea. Thanks for sharing. This is the ultimate. Oh, uh, this smells. Well, yeah. Oh man, it's almost complete still. <laughs> Never mind, there could be live gators. Keep an eye out for cars, Jeff. Right. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> is there any cars coming? Your side or my side? passing over the bridge to Key Largo um, where I'm staying tonight and where there's a couple good spots supposedly to see mangrove cuckoo so this is a big step here uh, we're going to Dagny Johnson Key Largo Hammock Botanical State Park that's the real name of the place and first we have to stop at some other state park to get a permit the trails. You need a permit for what? Apparently. I don't know why. But them's the rules.
Like, they'll act like that if there's like a hawk or an owl or something sitting around. Mangrove cuckoos and the whole cuckoo family are known for not building their own nests. Uh, instead, they lay their eggs in the nests of other species, and uh, the host's parents are tricked into rearing their young cuckoos as if they were their own young. So I just I finished my first visit to uh, Key Largo Hammock Botanical State Park. It's uh, 6.30 in the evening, pretty quiet, definitely no sign of mangrove cuckoo. Uh, we did see a snake which was pretty cool, one that looks like a coral snake but isn't. I, don't know, I have to look it up, some kind of king snake or rat snake or something. A few warblers, nothing special. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool so we'll have to come back for a second. See if we can find any cougars. What? <laughs> well, today I'm starting out at Carey's Fort Circle on Key Largo, hoping to hear a mangrove cuckoo and then find it. So we haven't heard any mangrove cuckoos yet, but I see this guy down the road with binoculars and I think he's maybe playing a recording of them. So I figure we'll go down and see if he's had any luck. Oh yeah, uh huh? Yep, yeah, we just been walk we haven't walked past there. Oh okay. And then there's black whiskeria calling all over. I thought I heard one. Yeah, they're there. calling all over. Okay. But okay. The man well was the name. It's like wide Iberia is that wide Iberia? Yeah, I guess. I haven't heard any cuckoos yet, but well, none of them have been calling. I've been, yeah. even, even the mangrove, like, we, they just take like 15 minutes and then finally it came out, but it didn't do its call, it did that oh, other really? little thing it does. So. Uh -huh. Wow. The only thing calling has been the wide eyes and the uh, yeah, black whiskers, <laughs> and then the cardinals, of course. And oh, yeah. Hundred different calling. Right. Cool. And then there was a uh, great crested flycatcher okay. back in here falling. Uh -huh. so. I guess we'll run up yeah. and see if we can see <laughs> that mangrove. Thanks a lot. Good luck. So those guys said they saw a mangrove cuckoo right up here on the road a little bit, so we'll take a look. But, uh, apparently it wasn't calling and it only came out after they'd been playing there recorded call for a while so we'll see see by that thing but well he said that's as far as it went but he didn't say it was that somewhere between here and Did you see that, what was that bird? Did you see what it was? Yeah, it was just another bird. What? What do you want? I think you're going to have to rethink. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that yet.
think I just heard the bird somewhere over there. Well, we thought we might have heard the bird after talking to those guys, but um, it sounded pretty far off and pretty soon we lost it, so it's a good spot. We'll probably have to come back here if we don't have luck elsewhere. Now we're going back to the state park. Next stop is to get the backcountry permits at this park down the road that we can hike into the good area for mangrove cuckoos. Why do you need a permit? What do they say? What do they warn you? <laughs> they say that it's dangerous to go on these backcountry trails because there's old wells and weird random stuff. And so they want you to fill out a form so they know where to find you if you never come back. So we got our permits to uh, hike the backcountry trail here. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot, we gotta call the uh, rangers. Let them know that we're venturing into dangerous territory. Um, we're supposed to call them because uh, they need to know where to get you if you fall into a well. Some other dangerous place that you can't get out of. Hi, yes, I'm calling because I'm uh, heading out on the backcountry trail and I was told to call and check in when I do that. So, yes. Uh, I, I have the permit. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Caterpillars are the preferred food of mangrove cuckoos. So they must be around. Do you want to get this shot first? Oh, the fuck is this? Nobody seems to be seeing cuckoos. The, there was, this morning we ran into a couple guys who had just seen one. Really? Um, and it was right just north of um, that Carey's Fourth Circle. I don't know if you've, you've heard of it. It's, no. It's, um, is that on this road? It is It is on this road. It's about si seven miles up, I think. Six and a half, seven miles up. And uh, they were playing calls. They were, yeah, they were playing a call. And uh, when we ran into them, they had just one. Overall, it's been quiet everywhere we've been. I mean, we found yesterday in here there were, were a few warblers, a couple cape and some um, um, birds and stuff, but no, I haven't heard any cuckoos. Well, I, I, uh, I have an iPod, so I tried it down here a little bit. It didn't, didn't make a difference. That's oh, yeah. what people have been saying for days. That they're Not only are they not singing, but they're not responding to iPod. I don't know if this person you talked to, it was, who you said it was a response to their I think they said it was, recorder. but they said it didn't sing. Even then, it came, uh, they said after it about, came up, but it didn't sing. Right. Yeah. And that was after like 15 minutes. They said of playing the calls. So. Yeah, that's a signed road. There's a sign on off the highway. You can see the name of the. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you're, you know, if you're going slow. I'm gonna try it. I, I've, I've been in here about four times. About my fourth try in here. Yeah. I know so many people are fighting. You know, I have. One, one time, uh, maybe a week ago, a couple of birds were parked out here in the parking lot in the very late afternoon, maybe just before sunset. Oh, yeah. And one flew out and flew over to the other side. Oh, wow. They, they reported. Okay. But I, uh, you know, this is in the, Pranty's book as being the best spot to, to get the bird. Really? 
Yeah, but I thought it's just I, not it's just not happening for anybody. Yeah. And I some one guy yesterday I talked to who was a uh, Canadian. He was, he was a he's a professional. I mean, he wasn't an ornithologist, but he was in some you know professional situation. And uh, mm -hmm. he said that uh, he thinks he says it's, it's too dry. And by that I would I would think that the dryness is keeping insects from laying or hatching or their eggs from hatching. Wow. And that which would be, you know, forage for yeah. the cuckoo. So I don't know if that's the case or not, but as I walk this nature, have, been, have you been in here? Before? Yeah, you were here before. I walk the nature trail, especially every leaf in there is a little bit of hanging down. Yeah. You know, it looks it looks dry and you know it's, it doesn't look good. And I've been hearing words like it's sort of a minor drought right now in Southern Florida. Okay. So I think that's that may have something to do with the problem. If people were saying, well, the the cuckoos are late this year. <laughs> then it was, well, <laughs> they're just not singing. And then it's like, well, it's dry. <laughs> wow. They're not here, you know, or something. But there's been a few saying that. Yeah. And I, I um, about four days ago, I was down in the Key West, and uh, somebody down there saw one at the airport. I went out the next morning. I couldn't find it. So I, I got one more full day left in Florida before I had to go home. So I'm giving one shot more on this. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, there you go. I, uh, Thanks for the information. Luck. Yeah, likewise. Uh, oh, I'm going to go up there. Uh, I, I'm, you know, the probability of me seeing is near zero, but it's better than this place right now, it sounds like. Yeah, it's, I mean, there was one there, so that's, yeah. Another swing and a miss. Now we're going to take lunch. I'm driving to Key West for no particular reason <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon. Um, there are some cool birds out there, but it's not likely that I'll find a mangrove cuckoo out there. But, you know, I was just sitting around not doing anything, so what the hell. Isn't it a dog? Welcome to the Truman Waterfront. Wow. cuckoos may be more rare this year than usual. Um, they've always been, or at least for a very long time, have been uncommon in the states, in, in Florida. Um, but they're not endangered because apparently there's quite a healthy population in the West Indies. It just happens that their range barely gets into the U.S. at all, so there are only a few in Florida and maybe even declining to, from the sound of it. So we're on our way back to Key Largo from Key West. Uh, Key West turned out to be a long drive for, with very little reward. <laughs> we 
saw, uh, well, we went to Fort Zachary Taylor, I think it's called, looked around, saw a few birds, but none of the cool, rare stuff that was has been reported out there. And, um, just drove around Key West and weren't that impressed by it, uh, although we did see the southernmost point in the continental U.S., so that was good. But now we're back on the two and a half hour drive back. I think we'll stay in Key Largo tomorrow. All for love of a mangrove cuckoo. So I've been trying to decide whether or not to use uh, recordings of mangrove cuckoo song to draw birds out where I can see them. Um, originally I didn't want to because I felt that uh, I, I want to kind of see the bird on its own terms. I don't want to trick them into thinking that I'm <laughs> another bird. I don't, I'm not sure that I really pinned down exactly why it was something that I wanted to avoid. Um, I'm getting kind of desperate to have one more full day down here. And apparently everyone I've run into out here is saying that the birds just aren't singing, you know, the... the um, it's just very hard to find the birds, and um, there were a couple of guys that finally heard one or, or saw one today, but only after playing a call for 15 minutes or something. And, um, I'm really hoping to just get one glimpse of of a bird, so I'm thinking that tomorrow morning I'm gonna go ahead and try and play the call, and um, you know, hopefully not disrupt the bird much, but. Um, just enough to see it. Hi, how's it going? Uh, you're on break? Nothing. Um. <laughs> anyway, Tom and I went to Key West today. But it was about five hours of driving and one hour of being at Key West. So after a day like today, I have to rest up and take it easy, but I do want to study the song, so I'm ready for tomorrow. So here it goes. This is the key right here. That's what we're looking for. Cuckoo. So my plan for right now is to drive up to Carrie's Ford Circle again where those other guys saw the mangrove cuckoo yesterday and probably play the sound, um, play the recording of the song and see if uh, anything responds. Uh, if that doesn't work, I don't know, spend most of the day trying that somewhere else. I mean, like, I can do it where it, like, pause. Yeah, for like a certain amount of time. Right, well, get up, get up, get up. Get up.
Was it two of them, the same one? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's bad for the birds to get drawn out like that by a non-bird. <laughs> I know people, serious birders, do it all the time, but just have to read up and see what, what they say about it. Anyway, doing it once isn't going <laughs> to kill anybody. You wait until the last day. Yeah. But besides that, how are you feeling? Awesome. No, I'm feeling awesome. <laughs> You didn't even have to fuck your, um, blister up. That's true. <laughs> Alright, so I, every night um, during the trip, I'm making notes about what happened, what we saw, you know, and um, things things that I want to write about because I'm basically gonna try and write up some kind of short piece about the trip and uh, you know just the adventure of it and what you know what happened. So <laughs> I'm uh, trying to catch catch things as they happen. So I don't forget. <laughs>